Then the show we have Niterói's Digital Currency, the Digital Euro, and Shapeshift going down. I am your host, Maurício Magaldi, and this is Block Drops, your weekly digest on blockchain for business. These news are not a form of endorsement, sponsorship, or encouragement for consumption, and are meant for educational purposes only. In a recently announced and detailed partnership between the City Hall of Niterói, one of the largest cities in the state of Rio de Janeiro, and the Federal University of the state, they announced uh, the very first uh, social digital currency that will be issued uh, for the, the city's population uh, that will be based in blockchain. On July 13th, the details were presented in an event promoted by the city's uh, government and management school with the presence of Mayor Axel Grael, who is very excited about the project of launching this blockchain-based digital currency in Niterói because it's a very innovative idea uh, and it's called part of the uh, City Coins uh, Brazil Initiative as well. Through this uh, digital currency, which is dubbed NITE, uh, it will be possible uh, for the town to be uh, ever more uh, solidary and more sustainable, and the city will be more dedicated for the upkeep of the, of the city as well, uh, according to the mayor. Uh, this project aims to transform Niterói in a smart town, in a smart city, and this currency will have more of a social appeal uh, because for the people to earn uh, those NITE coins, they will have to uh, run uh, good deeds around the city, be it pick up trash or plant a tree or paint uh, um, uh, a bench in the, in the square nearby. So every action that is uh, aimed towards the conservation of the city or improving the environment of the city will be rewarded with the NITE coins. The potential of a city with uh, half a million uh, inhabitants such as Niterói in adopting such a currency is huge because not only it will incentivize the people to uh, maintain and protect the environment, uh, with these rewards, uh, the, the people will also be able to uh, sort of uh, increase the economy around these good deeds. So it's uh, also something that the mayor highlighted. The, one of the responsibles by the technical project of the university, Sérgio Albuquerque, uh, also informed that the technology that will be used, the blockchain technology that will be used by the project was not yet defined. The idea is that they will prototype a wallet that will interact with the blockchain and they will choose the blockchain in the, in the following phases. Uh, they are evaluating a blockchain such as Hathor, the Brazilian uh, based blockchain, uh, Ethereum, Bitcoin as well, but this, uh, the choice of the protocol hasn't been done yet and in this aspect uh, the, the decision will also depend on the user experience that uh, the uh, City Hall will desire for the NITE coin in that regard. So it's pretty interesting, it seems that uh, there is uh, this trend of not only the CBDCs as we've been reporting but also uh, purpose-specific uh, coins or tokens such as this NITE coin, which uh, uh, aim to incentivize uh, changes in behavior or specific behaviors of a portion of the population. And well, that's exactly what blockchain does, right? Is uh, create the incentives for, uh, for an expected or desired behavior. And I think that NITE has a potential to actually strike that in Niterói, and if this uh, is something that is actually uh, feasible and proves successful, it will certainly uh, mark a trend not only in Rio de Janeiro but across towns uh, in Brazil as well. 
on July 14th, the European Central Bank announced a new phase of the Digital Euro Project. It's an investigation phase that will last 24 months and will aim to resolve a design of the digital world based on users' preferences and the technical advice by the companies and the intermediaries. The announcement was made uh, in an event by the Governing Council of the European Central Bank and they announced that after nine months since the report that was published originally uh, on Digital Euro, they have carried out uh, more analysis. They reached out for the citizen and professionals, consulted with multiple companies and experiments, and decided that they need to expedite the Digital Euro pro uh, project. So in that regard, the idea here of this phase is that they will address these design and distribution aspects of the digital euro in line with the needs that will be mapped and designed around uh, of, the, the, of the merchants and the citizens and the companies that will be using the euro uh, throughout the, uh, this investigation phase from issuance to consumption to burnout, etc. Uh, it's not only going to be directed to the citizens, but the whole European Parliament, other European decision makers, uh, other uh, entities and stakeholders in Europe will be also uh, uh, reached out by uh, the work group. And during this investigation phase, uh, they will do the design around user needs, around the focus groups with prototyping and, and further conceptual work and will determine the use cases that the digital rule should, digital rule should support in terms of priority. Uh, so it's not only accessible to people, but also carries less risk, is more accessible and more efficient than the regular cash uh, in, in Euro. So the project will also highlight the changes that will be necessary for the uh, regulatory framework in Europe which could be needed depending on how the investigation progresses and how the use cases emerge from this investigation. And of course, policymakers in the parliament will also be engaged as part of the results. As far as the technical work is concerned, uh, it will also be uh, in, uh, intensified in, the, in these 24 months and during the, this phase they will assess whether they will be using blockchain or they will be building on top of TIPS, the Target Instant Payment Settlement, which is the instant payment infrastructure for Europe. And in the tests, and, and in the tests they have uh, been able to reach both with blockchain and with TIPS transactions uh, over uh, 400, uh, 4,000 transactions per second, uh, which suggests that maybe a uh, hybrid architecture could be possible between centralized and decentralized architectures to interoperate depending on the use case that they will map in this uh, investigation phase that they are entering. They did not leave out uh, a note uh, around sustainability. So according to these experiments, uh, the digital Euro core infrastructure uh, would be uh, consuming uh, less power than uh, crypto assets such as Bitcoin in running tens of thousands of transactions per second. So again, this topic, which is very controversial, came about again in one of the central European Central Bank's papers uh, outlining their next, next investigation phase. Um, for what it's worth, uh, I think 24 months is a very long time. Uh, especially if you consider the stages where China is and other countries such as Japan and uh, US and even Brazil uh, that uh, have announced uh, closer dates for their local uh, currencies to be sort of digitized. Uh, but also uh, it will be interesting to see how this project particularly evolves since the, uh, Europe is such a big player in the geopolitical arena 
Let's see how they behave in the crypto space as well, which is becoming increasingly more important by the minute. In the last note today, we go back to the DAO news desk, the Dow news desk, in a note from Shapeshift, which is a leading non-custodial uh, cryptocurrency exchange that announced that they are going to open source the code of the platform and also dissolve the entire corporate structure, which is the first, again, in this the DAO space. The plan includes uh, distribution of uh, 340 million FOX tokens, which are the governance tokens for uh, Shapeshift, uh, for everyone who traded $1 or more in Ethereum or other ERC-20 tokens until June 9th of this year. Uh, current and past users of Shapeshift, Shapeshift will be eligible uh, to receive this airdrop. There is a table, depending on how many trades you did, is how much uh, they're going to uh, issue or airdrop to your wallet in number of uh, FOX tokens. Um, Register Shapeshift wallets will also, with balances in June 9th, will also receive uh, 250 FOX tokens. Uh, users of other wallets that are connected with Shapeshift will also receive FOX tokens. And effectively, the community will receive over 6%, 60% of the total FOX supply uh, in the community. Uh, there will also be uh, 120,000 users from other uh, DeFi platforms that will receive FOX tokens as well. Uh, the airdrop is a process where the recipients are wallets and the tokens are immediately deposited or transferred uh, into those uh, wallets directly from the exchange. So that, that's how they uh, allocate the tokens into each wallet. Uh, not only that, uh, they are also open sourcing uh, the whole code and infrastructure uh, the code will be first and then uh, other infrastructure components that are not open source ready right now will be made ready in uh, the short term uh, while uh, being run by the uh, Shapeshift Foundation uh, uh, progressively uh, open, the, open sourcing the code in the process. This process will also uh, decentralize all protocols functions that are uh, relying on centralized infrastructure, such as the uh, authentication method for Shapeshift, which is uh, how other third-party applications connect with the exchange. The CEO, uh, Eric Voorhees, uh, who's a, a proponent of decentralized infrastructure and decentralized organizations as well, uh, said that the decision to dissolve the company uh, corporate structure and transfer the governance to the user was largely inspired by the DeFi community, which uh, has grown significantly over the past year, according to his statement. So he's been a, a vocal advocate of DeFi and DX uh, and also DAOs in the recent months. And it's interesting to see an executive putting the money where the mouth is uh, in doing that with uh, his very, uh, Company, the company he founded and um, presides over. So very interesting to see how this uh, movement will impact not only how Shapeshift evolves as a company that is now governed by uh, many thousand token holders, but also how uh, the adoption of Shapeshift changes uh, throughout this time, because it's interesting to see how they're going to position themselves in the marketplace uh, now that they are uh, completely governed by uh, a DAO, a decentralized autonomous uh, organization. Very interesting. We'll keep tabs on the DAO use cases as they emerge. So you can keep yourself up to date on the DAO space here with us in the Block Drops podcast. Block Drops Podcast is available on Spotify, Anchor, Google Podcasts, and Apple Podcasts, and most of the major podcast platforms. You can contact us by email 
on blogdropspodcast at gmail.com, on Instagram at blogdropspodcast, and on Twitter at blogdropspod. Shoutouts today to Gustavo Bertolucci, Brian de Souza, and Alex Vazarli, who share the links you will find in today's episode notes. This is all for today. See you next time. Ciao.